Hi, today is Monday, April 3rd, 2017. It's the first day of the sixth week of Lent, and this is a sweet fix. And uh, I would like to talk about, uh, well, the absurd gender ideas of uh, identity politics of the postmodern left and what they are, well, what they are doing to to our societies, or at least what they're doing to part of our societies. And actually, right now, I think we should start with uh, with United Kingdom, with Britain, because there was a story a few days ago uh, about uh, Hull, Uni Hull University in England, where uh, students are told uh, that if they if they fail to use gender neutral language in their essays, they risk losing marks. Thus, they le they they risk uh, worse grades if they if they use gender specific language instead of gender neutral. And I mean, this sounds completely crazy, but that's where, where we have got gotten in Europe and in the West. Maybe someone could inform me about the situation in American academia. It wouldn't surprise me if, if it happens in the United States too. And I would like to compare this. This is at university level. Uh, and of course, university level, then we are pretty high up in the system. But we could compare this with what's going on in Sweden. In uh, in daycare and uh, preschools, because that's sort of where it all starts, in forming, forming children and forming young people. Uh, there are gender, gender neutral uh, daycare centers in Sweden, uh, or so-called gender daycare, uh, where uh, where they are pushing a postmodern, postmodernist experiment. Teaching kids that uh, the, that uh, boys and girls are, are really the same, and there are no no differences between the genders or or the sexes. But it's not only. The, I mean, a few years ago, that this would be a question of specific daycare institutions that would push this ideology. But according to an article by the Swedish psychiatrist David Eberhardt. This is a part of the action plan of most preschools in Sweden. I guess this comes from some political level. This is this is what they want. And uh, I mean this is a part of a leftist agenda that they have been able to push because well because the so-called right in Sweden have been sleeping. And uh, if we should return a little to, to Eber, Eberhardt and what he is writing, because he wrote an article a few days ago about this. And he claims, and I think he is right, he claims that men and women are different. Oh, big news there. Oh, not for me, but I mean, seriously, if you have observed men and women your entire life, boys and girls and men and women, you know this. I, I think even the third wave feminists should know this, and I think some of them do, but uh, they pretend not to because it's not a part of their narrative. And what he says is that biology, and he is quoting uh, the British neuroscientist uh, Simon Bar Baron Cohen. Uh, he says that biology is the main factor between difference between men and women, between the sexes. And uh, I mean, this has nothing to do with equality between between the sexes, because if you claim that we are all the same, what is going to happen? Is anyone going to be happy by happier by trying to conform to a role in which they do not fit? I mean, of course there are men who are more feminine than others, and of course there are women who are more masculine than others. Of course there are, but us in general, men and women have different uh, characteristics. You could, for instance, say that women in general are more care more about their social network than men do. Men in general, it's easier for men in general to stand up alone. 
men in general, I think it's easier for men in general to find find the way through through unknown territory. On the other hand, women in general probably got better survival skill, skills in other areas. Uh, I mean, like sorting stuff out and I mean, there are just so many things that obviously are different. And any man or any woman who has seriously shared their life with someone of the opposite sex, be it in, in marriage or even just having brothers and sisters, you really ought to know this. And, uh, and what happens when these ideas are pushed just for the sake of it is that everyone is, is miserable. We all get unhappy because I could give you one example from the top of my head. A, a few years ago, it was decided in Sweden that they would lower the physical standards for firefighters. Why? Because the physical standards, I mean like the standards for strength, made it very difficult for women to become firefighters. So they lowered the standards to make it to make this profession more accessible for women. But but if my house is on fire, I want to be rescued by someone who act, who is actually able to carry me. I don't care if the person who who is lifting me is male or female. Let's make that clear. But I want it to be someone who who is able to to carry me out from that fire. Really. So what can I say? I think that uh, <clears throat> this is just a lot of political correct craziness. And please, Hull University, stop. Please, Sweden, stop. This has to be stopped now. It can't go on in lo any longer. We need an honest conversation about what's going on in the world. We also need an honest conversation about men and women, about our strengths and our weaknesses, and we, we, we will not get this as long as, as long as we claim that, that everyone is equally the same, or well, in ba everyone is, is more or less the same. We're not. And do you think, for instance, that the fact that the migration wave to Sweden, of whom most are young men, and this has has created a surplus of men in some in some age groups in Sweden and then and then there was a rape epidemic because men in general are more aggressive than women in general to begin with men in general who are somewhere else than at their home place who are not surrounded by anyone that can that can keep them uh, well under control I mean, Swedes who go to Copenhagen, there was a saying before how Swedes would go to Copenhagen and act crazy because they weren't at home, so no one could talk about it because they didn't know about these Swedes drinking and acting out. Well, the Danes knew, of course, and that's how we got a bad reputation in Copenhagen and how we got a bad reputation in the Alps and how the Finns got a bad reputation in Stockholm because they did in Stockholm what the Swedes went, did in Copenhagen, etc. And this is about men mostly. I mean, of course, women can misbehave too, but they misbehave in other ways. My point here is we need the honest conversation and we need to base it on facts, not on, not, not on theories that are just based in ideological wish thinking and utopianism. And we need that now. So this ideology of uh, everyone of, of the genders being, being the same, that needs that ideology really needs to be fought back hard, and that's what I have to say about this right now. I would like to thank the people who are supporting this channel through prayers, through PayPal, through Patreon. That is all greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. And if you like this channel, please subscribe, and uh, I recommend you to click the little bell. Then you won't miss anything. And uh, if you got something to say, feel free to comment. 
please share my videos on social media please uh, and and uh, and if you like this video please like it and I think that's about it yeah, I could mention one more difference between between the genders I think in general because men have this tendency to stand to, to stand alone I think that explains why most political and social commentators in social media both YouTube and Facebook and wherever are men most but not all but I think there is a link here and uh, now that's it this is a sweet speaks have a nice day